Okay, following on from my previous video, there they are. I think they're probably not very good. They don't look particularly uneven. Anyway, first of all, the best way to start is probably to talk about supernumerary nipples. There is basically a line along which supernumerary nipples develop. It goes down there and along there, and eventually it goes towards the groin. As far as primates are concerned, there are usually two pectoral nipples. Extra nipples develop along these lines. Humans don't have them very often. Now, just look at the rudimentary nipples that men have. We don't have the fat development, although we do have a little bit sometimes. Now, you can actually grow them a little bit with herbs. Uh, it doesn't work particularly well, and they can have side effects. And also, there's a risk of cancer, so that should probably be avoided. Of all the primates, anyway, the eye eye, which is the Madagascan lemur-like primate, has nipples down here, which it can suckle its young with, but on the whole they're up here. Now I want to explain how breastfeeding and suckling started. Back in the Permian, before the Permian mass extinction, which wiped out about 96% of all life, there were what are usually referred to as mammal-like reptiles. They were in fact never reptiles, and it's better to refer to them as synapsids, and more specifically, therapsids. These used to incubate their eggs and they would have a brood patch like a bird would have, although they're not related to birds. This brood patch used to get sweaty sometimes because they were warm blooded, they used to generate their own heat. When the young first hatched out, they would tend to lick the sweat. Now this would be somewhat nutritional for them, but crucially, sweat contains antibodies, so it would boost their immune systems. For this reason, breastfeeding is a good idea just because it boosts the immune system as well as for any nutritional purpose. Later on mammals developed and they started to group these sweat glands, specialised sweat glands together into nipples, into teats. Usually they would have a line along there but they didn't have any breasts of course. So if you look at your average placental mammal, not marsupials, you will find that they have a line of maybe about six nipples along there because they have a large number of offspring. Later on the primates evolved and they evolved just two partly because it's symmetrical and animals tend to be symmetrical but also because they tended to have very few young at a time because they invested a lot of time in the intellectual development of their young and their learning. As a result you couldn't really cope with more than one or two young at a time and so they developed just the two pectoral things which also enables them to cradle the young like that and look at them. For ages and ages there, there was no such thing as breast. They were the same as mine, except that they produced milk. And in fact, these could produce milk probably with the right hormones, as you're probably aware. So basically I think the reason why breasts are considered attractive are bec is because in the past primates would have had to mate from behind, so they would have been attracted to buttocks and then as evolution proceeded the breasts started to be more attractive to them because they started to make love face to face. In the aquatic theory the reason why breasts developed was that more fat was put on subcutaneously to insulate primates from the water when during the amphibious phase and as a result they developed breasts. The dugong has breasts uh, apart from that it doesn't happen. There are no other primates with breasts so it's a suggestion that there's the aquatic theory. One of the things that's very unfair is the sexualization of breasts. They are primarily seen in Western culture as sexual objects rather than objects which nurture and suckle, nourish and provide immune system support to babies. In a sense that's primarily what they're for, that's their biological function and this is manifested of course, by banning breast, post, breast feeding pictures even though breasts are not necessarily sexual objects. So many heterosexual men and probably lesbian women as well, I don't know, I can't speak for them, they are sexual objects, they are sexually attractive, but I wonder whether if men had generally been breastfed they would feel less embarrassed by breasts and less sexually attracted to them and I'm thinking probably that the legacy of sexual attraction to breasts is the result of not seeing them regularly in public because of the lack of breastfeeding and taboo of breastfeeding in public. 
and also because they feel a sort of need for breasts which they didn't get as babies so they sort of crave breasts and that gets expressed sexually uh, which is quite sad really because it makes it more difficult for people to bring up their children in a healthy manner uh, and in a manner which is uninhibited and accepting of that kind of difference um, and uh, also makes men, heterosexual men at least, focus on a body part rather than on the whole person which obviously is pretty bad news really.